I like your shirt. That is so cute. Oh, Aww. <laughs> fan. Yeah, Maybe I can see that. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, very cool. I'm a fan of Five Iron Frenzy. So excited to talk to you. And yeah. Congratulations. Uh, first album in what, seven years? I think so. Yeah. It just keeps happening. It's like a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, before we get into that, here at Bionic Buzz, we're all about people's passion. Where's your passion for music that led you on this amazing journey? Was a certain album inspired it or something that was just naturally for you as a child? No, it was Motown and it was my dad and I had a music room when I was growing up. And so when my mom was in night college, my dad and I would jam and choreograph moves to Motown records, oh, <laughs> starting, wow. starting at age nine. Yeah. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Did you guys ever do any like Motown covers or anything in the band or? I don't think so. No, those guys are more into ABBA and ELO. <laughs> yeah, but I can sort of see it though. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. So yeah, this new album, Until This Shakes Apart, um, mm -hmm. 13 tracks, uh, what, and it was successfully kickstarted. When did the writing process for this start going on? Like, was Honestly, it years ago? Yeah. yeah, about seven years ago, like right after we recorded our last album, which was Engines of a Million Plots. Mm -hmm. Scott was pumped and hyped. He's our uh, bass player, but also the main songwriter in the band. And he went nuts, but the rest of us were kind of like, well, it was kind of like hold off. <laughs> and it's some of those songs have been revamped and revamped and made it on this album. And uh, it's just been a long process. Nice. Yeah. Cause I mean, I was playing the album. My wife came in and she's like, is like, is this 500 frenzy? And I was like, yeah, it's a little, a little darker than their, your older stuff. So I see if it's kind of going on with the political climate and everything going on, you know, you know? Yeah. I really like that. Um, Reese kind of, he's the main lyricist Reese Roper and he just takes it to where he needs to go and where he feels his heart kind of leads him and he didn't want to hold back at all. And um, he spent a lot of time revamping the lyrics and making sure that they were, good and fit in the songs. And I know that's a challenge to fit into the music, but also to say what you want to say. And I think he did a great job at that. Oh yeah, amazing job. So mm -hmm. uh, when did you guys start the Kickstarter campaign for this? You know, I think it was September. Yeah, we, we knew we wanted to do it. We weren't sure when. And then when, when all the pieces were kind of in a row, we went fast and then it was like, oh my gosh, we're doing this quick. And so <laughs> let's get it going. And once again, this time, Brad, our trumpet player, came over and we pushed launch at my house wearing masks. And boom, within an hour, we had reached our goal pretty oh. much. No, maybe maybe it was like 31 minutes. It was it was insane. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy. I can imagine that. So um, I know uh, everything. I, I, I love when new albums come out, but it's also kind of annoying because it's like, oh, I really want to hear these stuff live now. So um, mm -hmm. is there any process doing like a like a live stream or anything is like like Jimmy World doing all like their albums now and I'll be oh, I'd love to do this, you know? Yeah, we would love to do it. We haven't really talked about it yet. A couple of our members work in healthcare, And so uh -huh. they um, are pretty busy. And the rest of us like me, I'm homeschooling. And, um, you know, it's just hard. And we don't all live in the same town. So because we don't all live in Denver, we haven't even honestly played the songs as a band oh, wow. yet. Because when you go in the studio, you add more horn parts, you add more parts. And so these songs haven't been played live yet. Oh, so it's going to take a lot of rehearsal. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe the end of this year, you know, this vaccine yeah. is going around, hopefully, you know, so. Well, that's the thing with Five Iron. There's eight of us. And we yeah. started in 95 and then took a long break. So I don't think time... Yeah. Like when we think about, oh man, is it going to be a long time? Time is very relative in this band. Oh, that's right. You know? Yeah, it was great when you get back together and had that documentary. I uh, also really loved to pick it up, uh, Scott Doc, where I interviewed Taylor and actually was at the premiere in Orange County. So Me too. Yeah. yeah how, that I, was I, awesome. Yeah, my experience was seeing that up on the big screen, you know? and then I think the, the best part, the day, you know? I know. And the best part was doing it in California during Back to the Beach. So that all, like so many musicians that were in the film were there. Yeah. That was surreal. And hearing people laugh and cheer when they saw themselves on the screen, it was awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I used to live there. I just moved to Florida. So, but mm. uh, that was all. Yeah, it sucks that Back to the Beach is no more, but that was one of my favorite music festivals to cover. I know. know. That was so surreal. I think of it and I'm like, that. those lineups were crazy. Yeah. So fun. Very nice. So is it anything in the future fans could look forward to or just kind of just wait and see right now, you know? Well, I think you're right. I think live, who knows when, but hearing these songs live and for us to, um, what happens is when you play a song live, it gets a life of its own. Yeah, exactly. That's why and like so 
Right. Like when you hear a song in the recording, you're like, I know that's a mosh part. I know that's a mosh part. Or I, I know that's a shout out game vocal. So I think when we play these songs live, these songs are going to get their own personality. And even just the, we did a listening party was one of the kickstarting pledges. And we had several people um, and the band members and we played it and we were so surprised with there's a song called Renegades. Yeah. And it just resonated with people. And we said, what song do you want to hear next? And they said, Renegades. And so we played it twice, actually. We played it oh. again. And you don't know which song people are going to like. Which one or which ones are you know going to really be the ones that move people? And you never know. Well, that's, that's why I tell bands I, I love them. They actually do a full album. I mean, I understand why you really singles. It's hard right now. But um, mm -hmm. you never know which the track that the fans are going to grab on. So even someone just some absurd track might be my favorite, while the other ones might like the more single stuff. So I love mm -hmm. it. So, well, congratulations, I guess, seven years into making this album. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's so fun to see how things ebb and flow. And when you get the time to really put your art into it and all the pieces into it. And what I love about the band is there's this, this very fluid collaboration. And the fact that we were recording at Scott's house in the basement and five of us live in Denver, he would get excited and say, oh, come over and do these gang vocals. And we could do it instead of last time we recorded in New York, which was fun. But once you record, you record, you go home. Now it's like, oh, and we want to add these other horn parts, come over. And so I think that lended itself to more create creativity. Oh, I love that. All right, well, thank you so much. And hopefully at some point we'll see you live or, or live stream or maybe in concert, keep my fingers crossed. So. Sounds good, Stephen, nice to meet you. Nice Take to meet care. You. Take care.